and welcome to the program that analyzes the week that was and helps position you for the week ahead. I'm Cheryl Cassoni. I'm in for Marie Bartiromo. Congress is racing against the clock to fund the government ahead of a September 30th deadline and another looming threat of a shutdown. But some House conservatives in the Freedom Caucus are embracing the possibility of stalemate by the end of the month, arguing that bringing the government to a screeching halt is better than allowing the country to continue with rampant spending. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Oversight Chairman James Comer warned that a shutdown would also halt probes into Hunter Biden and any impeachment inquiry into President Biden. If we shut down, all the government shuts it down, investigation and everything else. Any type of shutdown would, Stuart, interfere with our investigation. Any excuse the Biden administration can give not to be transparent with the House Oversight Committee, they're going to take that. Joining me now, House Oversight and Judiciary Committee member, Congressman Russell Fry. Uh, but before we get to that, Congressman, you represent part of the South Carolina coast, including Myrtle Beach. How are recovery efforts going after Hurricane Idalia? And are you satisfied with the federal response that you've seen so far? So far, I think you know we were largely spared. Uh, the timing of the hurricane was really important. It hit at a low tide. Uh, we certainly saw tornadic activity. We saw some flooding. Uh, so there is some damage, uh, but it's not as bad as it could have been. Uh, so efforts of recovery are ongoing. The state is working with the federal government. Uh, and I haven't heard any challenges yet, uh, but we'll be uh, certainly aware of those as they come up. Are, are there any key things that you want to see happen uh, throughout uh, the next uh, several weeks as far as infrastructure or, or anything else that has to do with construction? I mean, what do the people of your district need most right now? I think right now, I mean, we've had some roads uh, roads out. There was some some damage, so assessing those, making sure that we could get those uh, those arteries, if you will, back online, uh, and then really helping for those who were damaged uh, through a hurricane, through the hurricane, and then through the tornadoes. Uh, that's going to be really important, and that was kind of isolated. But we did have some tornadic activity. Uh, but however, again, FEMA's responsibility is to make sure that they're getting people ready, uh, that they are getting people back on their feet. Uh, and so we'll be watching. They don't have a great track record of that. Just look at Maui uh, as a prime example. But for, for us right now, assessing the damage and getting back on our feet is priority number one. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the people in your state and everyone affected by this terrible storm. So let's move on. As I mentioned in the introduction, when lawmakers return in a little over a week, it's going to be a race to prevent a government shutdown. Will McCarthy be able to get a short-term deal passed, and is that the best option, in your opinion? Well, I think a continuing resolution is certainly an option on the table, and it may be even the best one. Uh, but what the American people really are focused on is this out-of-control spending, and if we're going to curtail that, we need to be serious about it. So even things like a temporary continuing resolution need to have some guardrails in them. Uh, we can't continue to prop up the administrative state. We can't continue to, to ignore you know, crisis at the border. And so the larger spending packages that, that come up, the appropriations process that will be after the continuing resolution, those are critically important. But in my mind, uh, the continuing resolution is a vehicle to get some wins for the American people that they expect us to deliver on. But uh, and so we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm at least right now optimistic. Well, I mean, do you and your colleagues, uh, I just want to kind of remind everybody about the, the ratings agencies and these, these downgrades. I mean, it is the U.S. credit rating that has come under fire. And one of the biggest reasons that Fitch mentioned was the fact that we, you know, there's, there's all this arguing and back and forth. It's always this last minute deadline. It becomes so politicized when at the end of the day, it is the credit rating of the U.S. I mean, this hurts our borrowing costs as, as a country. Country. Uh, and that's a very real threat. Do, is, is that at least in your memory or in your colleagues' recent memory uh, as we go into this new fiscal fight? I, think, I don't think anyone really wants a shutdown. I think at the end of the day, House Republicans have delivered on that. I think the deliberative or the debate process is lengthy. And when you start looking at how the sausage is made, it's complicated and convoluted. Um, but at the end of the day, we can't keep borrowing the, at the same rate and, and mortgaging our future, our children's future. Uh, we have to get this under control. And so I'm encouraged by the dialogue that ha is happening right now. I'm optimistic that things can get done. Um, but what is unacceptable is the status quo of 30, 40, 50 years of Washington spending. That's got to stop. And we need to start getting our fiscal house yeah. in order. 
uh, we need to we need to make sure that we we send that message to all the government bureaucrats that want to keep doing what they're doing. Especially as we send more and more money overseas, in particular to the people of Ukraine, for example, there's a lot of uh, concern about costs and spending. I think across the board, sir. Uh, Oversight Chairman James Comer says an impeachment inquiry into President Biden is coming, and documents released by the National Archives show that Hunter Biden's firm exchanged over a thousand emails with then Vice President. Joe Biden's office confirmed that the Records Administration has more than 5,000 emails and documents containing pseudonyms that were used by Joe Biden. What happens now, sir? Well, I think, you know, the next step in my mind is that impeachment inquiry. I think that gives uh, the investigations more legitimacy. I think that they already had it, but uh, I think it gives it more legitimacy, it allows you to, to uh, challenge things better from a court perspective. Uh, but Look, the, the focus is incredible right now, and, and what you know may have started very broad, we now kind of understand the, the conduct of the Biden family and the Biden brand. And so, you know, it was just released that Hunter Biden was on at least 15 trips with then Vice President Joe Biden, which is you know a, a violation in and of itself. And so, I think the impeachment inquiry is the logical next step. It needs to happen. Uh, and the American people expect it. This is not a fishing expedition. If anything, it validates the work that these committees have already done and what the, the information that we have shared to the American people. We've been stonewalled at every single turn uh, by, by the bureaucratic state. And to, to have this information out in front, the American people see exactly what it is. And so the inquiry is the logical next step for this. And, and I look forward to getting that process started. D but, but does the GOP worry that it's going to look politicized, especially as we get closer and closer to the election? Well, I mean, maybe that's that's it. But I think what you let the facts dictate where we go, and that's always been. If you if you talk to Jim Jordan, you talk to James Comer, you talk to Speaker McCarthy, they've always said the same thing: let the facts dictate this. This isn't a political sham impeachment like we've seen in uh, under Nancy Pelosi. The the facts are guiding where we go here, uh, and in my mind, this is way bigger and more egregious than what we've seen in Watergate. And so at this point, given all the evidence that we have already and all the evidence that remains to, to be gathered, but where we are right now, it is the logical step to, to, to explore this reality that we're in. And, and again, we didn't cause this. This is the actions of then Vice President Joe Biden and his family. You have emails, you have FD 1023s, you have WhatsApp messages talking about you know, his father sitting right next to him. You just have a very large, lengthy paper trail. You have over $20 million, 20 LLCs, nine members of the Biden family receiving payments from foreign sources. It's problematic for this vice president. And finally, the mainstream media is starting to pick it up. Well, Congressman Russell Fry, we will be watching and waiting. Thank you, sir. Thank you.